Good evening and welcome to Calvin News and Views. Well, it's the festive season. It's a spiritual season. It's the time of the year where we like to reflect on the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We take a look at a reflective look in the past year and perhaps give a message of hope for the future year coming. This evening we are in the Bishop's House Cullis and once again we are in the company of Bishop Leo O'Reilly who has made us welcome here this evening and we are going to reflect on the year past and have a message of hope for the future. Bishop Riley, once again, thank you very much for allowing Calvin TV News and Views come to see you today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk to you this evening. Great. Bishop, the one thing I'd like to say is last night I saw you in the cathedral in Calvin and uh, it was a fantastic evening. Calvin had an evening of song and Christmas carols. Wow, what an evening. Yes, this uh, is an annual event now and uh, it's getting bigger every year. Uh, there were several choirs, a couple of orchestras uh, and musicians. Uh, it was a wonderful evening of uh, Christmas carols, uh, of song and of reflection. Uh, and uh, a good way to prepare ourselves for the coming feast. An opportunity to reflect and also to have our hearts and our spirits lifted by those, those wonderful uh, carols and, and they were sung so well and there were so many people, it, it sounded literally heavenly at times. Yes, and indeed today, listening to the reaction of people last night um, at work, um, anybody who's been there were just, they said that every year it surpasses itself. Yes, uh, I think it's uh, good that we come together, not just uh, the uh, the usual people that come to the cathedral, but we had choirs from all the schools in the parish. Uh, we had uh, other choirs from the town. And this year, uh, it was an ecumenical event. We had a choir from the Royal School who sang a beautiful carol. Uh, so there's something new in it every year. Yeah, and for some people, for a lot of people, as I said today, that was the real meaning of Christmas last night. That's what Christmas is all about, and it was very well celebrated. Bishop, you have been very busy recently. You uh, launched the Holy Year in the diocese, and also you opened the Holy Door. So if you'd like to tell us about that, especially the Holy Door, but anyway, the launch of the Holy Year. Well, this year uh, is a Jubilee year. Normally in the church, there's a Jubilee year every 25 years, but the Pope can choose to declare an extraordinary jubilee and Pope Francis has done this, he announced it last April I think it was, that this would be a jubilee year of mercy. The emphasis of the year is on the mercy of God and that word mercy is a very rich word in the Bible. It, uh, it means not just pity as we might be inclined to think, but real compassion, feeling, uh, a real uh, sense of loving kindness. And it's the loving kindness of God that, that we want to focus on this year because sometimes, I think certainly when I was growing up, we had an image of God that was somewhat harsh. Uh, we were afraid of God. Uh, so if you were afraid of God, uh, prayer wasn't very attractive because you don't like talking to people you're afraid of. Uh, so I think Pope Francis is very anxious that, that we have a, a much more uh, positive understanding of God and a realisation that the Gospel is good news, that he wrote the, the, the major document that he has written so far is called The Joy of the Gospel. And he talks a lot about joy and he shows joy. I happened to be in Rome a few weeks ago for an education conference and at the end of it we met uh, Pope Francis in the audience hall and uh, just coming down, the, coming down the aisle of the audience hall um, before he, he went up on the uh, chair, uh, the, the joy radiating from his face was just wonderful to behold. 
And in his trips around the world, as he's doing at the moment, he's going to the Latin American countries as well. Yes. And uh, again, that radiance came from him there. And indeed, the crowd really, the huge numbers of people going to see him radiated back. Yes. So you could see the Christian mm -hmm. message getting across there. So he wants so this uh, message of, of God's love and God's mercy to be, to be known, to be experienced. Uh, not just that it's something you know about in your head, but that you actually feel it. And is that why he's done this now, made the Holy Door more, more accessible to the people within the diocese yes. rather than having it in Rome? Yes, the door is, the Holy Door is a symbol basically. It's a symbol of welcome. We open a door to welcome people to come in. And I think he's anxious also about people may, maybe who have become distant from the church. Uh, who have been away from the church for a long time. So the open door is a symbol of welcome back. Uh, we want you to be back and to experience the love of God. And of course that's a challenge for all of us because the love of God is experienced through us and through, uh, we have to mediate that love of God uh, to the people around us. Um, but it's, it's experienced also in the sacraments, and particularly the sacrament of God's mercy. It's a sacrament of confession, we call it, the sacrament of reconciliation. So there will be an emphasis on that this year as well. So the Holy Door used to be only opened in the basilicas in Rome. But the Holy Father this time has asked that every diocese in the world would open a Holy Door in their own cathedral. Again, he wants to, he talks a lot about the peripheries. Uh, making it more accessible. Making it more accessible to people mm -hmm. who are not at the centre. And uh, that's why he wants the message to go around the world. It's making people more aware, yes. rather than keeping it centralised in Rome. So, mm -hmm. in the cathedral in Cavan. In the cathedral, we had a ceremony last mm -hmm. uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, where we began at the outside the church uh, with a ceremony to open the holy door and we processed through the door and up to the altar then and we had a special mass to mark the beginning of the year of mercy in our diocese. And that's going to be kept open, that door is going to be kept open uh, all open day, every day? Every day until the For end the of this holy year which is next November at the end of the liturgical year. Okay, so you've had a very busy year this year in your diocese. You welcomed two new priests, Father Peter and Father Addison from Nigeria, and they've taken up parishes um, in Shercock, I think, and uh, Father Peter maybe in Calvin Town. That's correct. And indeed he read last night uh, okay. in the cathedral. Yes, uh, Father Peter and Father Addison are members of a Nigerian missionary society, the Missionary Society of St. Paul of Nigeria. And uh, I had the privilege of working in Nigeria for a few years myself. And during my time there, I spent five years in the seminary of that missionary society, teaching the young men who were preparing for the priesthood. And one of the men that was uh, in the seminary at that time was Father Addison, who is now in Shercock. Uh, Father Peter was ordained just last year. Um, so they're now working in, in your diocese. It's That's wonderful amazing. that uh, mm -hmm. we have the uh, assistance of these men because we're, we're getting short of priests ourselves. And uh, it's, uh, it's great to have personal contact with the society and to have had some experience in it uh, while I was in Nigeria. And uh, they are certainly uh, doing their bit for us now. Uh, just as we we went out and did for them. Yeah. Looking back on the on the on on the things that happened in our country during the year, and of course, one of the main things was the the uh, same sex referendum. Uh, the, sorry, the same sex marriage referendum, and indeed that was passed with overwhelming yes. Uh, you can look at that from many from many aspects. You can look at it as, uh, from the aspect of people of the same sex get married. Then you can look at it from from a religious point of view, where well, a, a, a man and a woman usually get married and have a family, and this is something different, looked upon maybe as unnatural by some people, but looked upon by other people as then, oh, this is this day and age, 
different for many. Uh, hard to explain to young people perhaps, and that's probably where um, down the road we have to change our teachings with young people so that we don't cast aspersions on people who are in that situation. Um, in general though, it passed and uh, it's over and done with now and not a lot has changed really, has it? Um, it, it was uh, a major event as you say and I think uh, it was passed because people saw it as an issue of equality and if it's a simple matter of equality, who wouldn't vote for it? Um, I voted against it because I believe it wasn't a matter of equality. Uh, I think it was a matter about the nature of marriage. And, uh, you know, the Church's understanding of marriage uh, is that it is for children, primarily. It is also for the couple and to uh, share their love. But the purpose of sharing their love uh, you know, children come into it there, and uh, I think the church will continue to teach that. The story of Christmas, uh, as we know, the 2000 year story of, uh, of the birth of Jesus Christ, where Joseph and Mary had to flee Palestine because of, of Herod, and uh, he went to Egypt. He went to Egypt. And uh, as we were just speaking before, before we, we, we recorded, um, that is happening today in Syria. The dreadful thing that is happening in Syria, people are fleeing from their land, people are not safe in their land. It is awful. Yes, uh, I get uh, a few Christmas cards every year that have this scene of the flight into Egypt uh, on the Christmas yeah. card. This year I got one which was slightly different, ta a different take on the scene. Uh, in one, one side of the card, was the traditional depiction of Mary and Joseph and the uh, child Jesus uh, and the, the donkey. But on the other side of the card was a very modern picture of uh, a father and a mother and children and all their possessions on a donkey. And they were fleeing from the war. So that's 2,000 years on, Bishop, and we still, we still got oppression, we still got religious oppression, we still got religious wars. Unfortunately, mm. we have, and uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, it's fair to call it religion because it's a perversion of religion. That's uh, what people don't understand, though, is it? They're called Muslims, and and there's there's anti-Semitism fear now in the world because of, because of what happened in Paris about a month ago. There is fear now. Muslims are, are not being respected, they're being feared because... Well, Muslims abhor the things that are being done in their name by ISIS uh, and by Islamic extremists, the Islamists as they're called. Uh, they abhor that as much as we do. Uh, and uh, they abhor it particularly because it is done in the name of God. And that's why I say it's a perversion, because that is not what Islam is about. Uh, and uh, you could take parts of the Bible and use them to justify slaughter. But again, that's not what Christianity is about. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he came to bring peace on earth to people of goodwill. That's the message of Christmas again. Uh, and he came to... Uh, bring an end to, to wars and to violence and uh, he uh, reminded us uh, that you know Christmas above all is the time that reminds us uh, that uh, because we experience the tremendous love and the kindness of God uh, we must be prepared to, to share that with others and uh, if we have been loved by God, if we have gone in that door and experienced the love and the mercy of God, we must be also prepared to come out the door and bring that love and mercy to others. We do give gifts at Christmas, and that, you know, that's part of, of generosity and all of that. 
but we usually give them to our friends and to our families. The challenge of Jesus is not just to love your friends, but to love the stranger, to love even your enemies. And that so, is the real mm -hmm. challenge of Christmas. And that's perhaps what the world could do with doing at the moment, is loving everybody. Because it will come to our turn to help the refugees from Syria. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that stage, let's talk about our homeless in Ireland. And uh, no more so, that, but this year, have we seen, have we really been uh, hit by the media telling us just how bad homelessness is in our streets in Dublin. And indeed, the new homeless, the people who cannot afford to pay rents of houses, people who have maybe lost their property, mm -hmm. cannot afford rents, people who are living in bed and breakfast and travelling in and out between those. Uh, only in the last year we've realised that there are so many people, families living like this and we have to look after our own perhaps before we set out to look after other people. But having said that, there is the fear, there is the fear of the people from abroad because we, we don't know about them, you see. There's fear, there's always fear about things that you don't know. Um, but I think if, if uh, we want to uh, gauge, you know, how our welcome will be for people from abroad. Maybe we can look at how we're treating people at home. And um, the, the new homeless, I mean, there were homeless people always, I suppose, there were people maybe who had mental health issues or, you know, misfortune of one kind or another. But they were a very small minority uh, and they were sometimes very difficult to help. But there's a new homelessness now created, created by, you know, people who are not able to, as you say, to pay their rents or pay their mortgages. And from some of the stories I have been listening to on the news, uh, it seems to me that some of the financial institutions are uh, being very harsh in their dealings with these people and uh, I think that uh, if, if somebody is uh, really making an effort to uh, you know we pay their mortgage and doing their very best it doesn't make any sense to put them out of their home and their house because they're going to have to get a house somewhere they're going to have to live somewhere and uh, you know if necessary uh, it mm. might make more sense for the government to assist them in paying their mortgage rather well, than punishing to, them uh, to, for not to, paying, yeah. uh, to carry the can if they become homeless. Mm. Okay, so that's the government. But do you think we as, as citizens ourselves on the ground are doing enough to help those people? I know there are always the few people who are very good who will go out and uh, collect the Christmas box for the homeless. But do you think in general is, is the public good enough? Well, I think, I think our people are very generous. I think the people of our own diocese here are extraordinarily generous. Uh, I think I may have said this before, that in, we do five or six uh, collections every year uh, in our churches throughout the diocese, and our diocese is among the highest contributors in the country. So I think people are generous, uh, and I, I think that, uh, you know, our... Um, our government and uh, our authorities shouldn't underestimate that generosity uh, and assume that they wouldn't tolerate, you know, receiving. I mean, at the beginning, uh, we were talking about taking in 200 refugees, you know, uh, and now we're talking about a, a, a bigger number. But when you look at countries like Germany and Sweden, we're really taking in few enough. So I think we, we, our people I think are, are prepared to do it if they get the leadership to do so. Yeah, I do think that we, when, when it comes to the crunch, that we are very, very generous to charities like that. Mm -hmm. And indeed, and indeed, I know that in Cavan, people have worked very hard to send boxes for the homeless people mm -hmm. in Dublin. And that's just one thing that I know about. But looking back on uh, over 
over the year and uh, and indeed our own people, uh, Irish people living around the Shannon are having a very rough time this last five or six weeks and their Christmases there are going to be very are going to be very tight with homes that have been flooded due to the floods. And again those people will be will be relying on the help and the generosity of their neighbours and their communities. Well we also I think the uh, the government has come in there very promptly uh, to promise that there will be uh, funds available to help people in those drastic situations, especially people who cannot get insurance for their yeah. homes uh, because they are really uh, very badly caught. And uh, uh, we are very fortunate, I think, in this part of the country that we have been spared yes. those kind of hardships. But I think anything we can do to help them, we should certainly be doing. Mm. And once again, Bishop O'Reilly, it's the time of the year where we sit back and we reflect, reflect on the year gone by and we reflect on the people that have departed from this world. And also we think of the people who are working abroad with their young families and cannot get home to see their folk at home. And it's the time of the year where you'd like to send them a message perhaps. Well, I'd certainly like to send Christmas greetings uh, to all our people uh, around the world, uh, whether it's uh, young people who have recently emigrated or uh, older people who have been uh, in England or America or Australia for years, uh, they, uh, you know, are very much in our thoughts at this time of the year. I send greetings uh, to them and wish them all the blessings and the joys of Christmas. I'd like to finish with a prayer for the Jubilee year of Pope Francis. Father, send your spirit and consecrate every one of us with his anointing, so that the Jubilee of mercy may be a year of grace from the Lord, and your church, with renewed enthusiasm, may bring good news to the poor, proclaim liberty to captives and the oppressed and restore sight to the blind. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you, Bishop O'Reilly. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you for your words of wisdom and your words of kindness. And uh, once again, we'd like to thank you for welcoming us into your, your house here in Cullis. And uh, thanks to speaking to everybody, to the diaspora through Cabin TV. So you've been watching Cabin TV News and Views and once again viewers please log on to Cabin TV and you will see us all over the world and we do wish everybody all over the world a very peaceful and happy Christmas.